Jimmy Connors, indisputably one of the greatest tennis players of all time. Too bad his video game is shit. Today I'll be talking about NES tennis games. You'll find out which one is the best and which ones are garbage, all on the first episode of Ball Champions Pro-Am Drop Shot Sports Video Games. Officially titled Jimmy Connors Tennis, this game was published by Ubisoft. Yes, that Ubisoft. In 1993, for both the NES and the Game Boy. And there even seems to have been a version for the Atari Lynx? In addition, an SNES counterpart, Jimmy Connors Pro Tennis, came out a little beforehand in December of 92. Jimmy Connors as the namesake is a bit of an odd choice, as by 93, he was pretty much a non-factor on the Pro Tour. Even though his final tour match was in 96, his last full season was in 92. I don't know, maybe they decided to go with him because of his big famous run back in 91 to the US Open semifinals. In any case, it's very much a throwback, at least visually. The characters serve without their feet leaving the ground, they dress in all white, and the Australian Open is apparently played on grass. That hadn't been the case since 1987. They also list the tournament in Rome, Italy as being on grass, which I don't think has ever been the case, but I guess it doesn't really matter. The game itself is just not very fun. The ball's super small, and it dies really quick after the first bounce, so you've really got to be on your toes to even keep it in play. The other thing is that the AI pretty much never misses. I tried both the beginner and the advanced difficulties, and I really didn't see any noticeable difference. What's up with that? So serving is pretty straightforward in this game, but it's the rallies that are just so painful. By getting into position early, you can hold down one of the shot buttons and hit a more powerful shot. Holding left or right can also put a decent amount of curve on the ball, but the AI is pretty much always going to get it back. It's unbelievable. Oh, come on. I like the hold the button down mechanic. Uh, it's used in other games, but I don't like it here because it's just the pace is just too frantic. Uh, it's just not very fun. And volleying, unlike in other games, is pretty useless, or at least I found it to be that way. I couldn't really get the timing down, so maybe that was just my problem. Looking at the manual again, apparently B does a powerful shot, while A is your normal shot. In my experience, the difference was pretty minimal, if there was even one. Seriously, look at this rally. I thought I'd gotten the hang of the game, but the computer is just relentless. Playing the tournament season mode was also a disappointment. After getting my ass handed to me in the first match, even after practice, I thought maybe the second match would be different. But essentially, you play against the same computer character, the same sprite, in the same arena, with just a different court color and maybe a different color backdrop. The difference between the various surfaces also seemed minimal at best. Beyond that, there's very little fanfare and very little visual design. The music is also really bad, and you will get very irritated by it within just a minute or so. You can at least turn it off when you start up the game. If you want to keep track of all your losses and how you've earned no prize money, you can use the password system they included, but unless you master the gameplay or have unbelievable patience to outlast the AI in every rally, it seems pointless. Maybe this game approaches fun with two human players, but against the computer, I just really don't recommend it. My rating? Fucking avoid this game. There are several games on this list that are way better and way more fun to play and aren't so frustrating. See you later, JC. Next up is Racket Attack, which is a rad name, and I even ended up kind of liking the game. It was published in Japan and in the US in 1988 by Jellico, and it was developed by a company you may or may not know from the Basis Loaded series. There's even a Wilson Sporting Goods endorsement in the US version on the back wall of the court. That's kind of a cool touch. The character names are the best. On the men's side, there's some actual boring human names like Bernard and Carter, but also bizarre choices like Gibco, Eagle, Horn, First, and Brofsky? On the women's side, the winners are Spoon, Orkler, Wana, Jansko, 
and James. Yeah, James is a woman, and that's fine. The game tells you each character has certain strengths, but apparently the developers only felt compelled to point out weaknesses in some of the female characters. Once you're ready, the game throws you into a Grand Slam style tournament. Each match is best of five sets for the men and best of three for the women. Same as in real life. You win seven matches and you win the tournament. The matches can be long too. My first match went four sets and took about an hour to complete. A password system allows you to keep your progress. The gameplay is some of the most unique of the era. When serving or receiving, the camera angle is initially low and more behind the character. After you or your opponent return serve, the angle switches to a higher, more traditional view. It was kind of jarring at first, but I ended up really liking this. Returning serve in other games can be difficult, but here it was easier to time. Yeah. When serving, you hit B to toss the ball and then A to swing. I'm not sure what the point was, but at least it works. According to the manual, holding the D-pad during the toss will allow you to perform different types of serves, like topspin, slice, etc. Honestly, I didn't see too much difference apart from where in the court the ball landed, either up the tee or out wide. Holding up did seem to make it go maybe a little faster, but I really couldn't find a way to ace the computer. When not serving, I couldn't seem to direct my return around the court very well. I tried holding the D-pad all different ways, but my shots almost exclusively headed to the center of the court. The only thing that affected my shot's trajectory was the timing of my swing. Hitting the ball a little early made it go cross court or to the center, and hitting the ball just a tad late made it go a little bit more down the line. Not really all that helpful. Rallies are similar. The manual says shots hit in front of you go to the left, those to the side go straight, and those behind the player go to the right. I guess this sort of makes sense for a right-handed player's contact point. My problem with this is just how difficult it is to even line up your shots in the first place. The game isn't particularly fast-paced as you can see, but figuring out exactly where you need to stand to even make contact is frustrating. For this reason, I found trying to rally from the mid or backcourt to be pretty useless. The more shots I needed to perfectly set up, the more points I lost. Volleying itself was a little bit more forgiving in terms of timing and your player's position. As such, I found a classic serve and volley plan, attack, racket attack, <laughs> to be most successful. To be fair, I did choose Eagle, who apparently excels at net play. I still don't think a strong baseliner would have made it any easier to line up my shots from the backcourt though. Once I got into the groove and became proficient at rushing the net, I managed to bagel my opponent in the fourth set after just barely edging him in the third set tiebreak. I chose to play this on clay, which is supposed to give you a little more time to set up your shots. The grass and hard courts, however, played pretty similarly in my experience. Presentation wise, the animations and sprites are fine, just not super detailed. They look like people though. It's definitely trying to be a more realistic simulation than other games. The characters just move a little sluggish for my tastes, but hey, I managed to beat the computer, which is more than I can say about Jimmy Connors. I was surprised to find out that there's a left-handed character you can play as well, Gibco. He also moved a little bit quicker than Eagle. One thing I liked a lot was the in-game music. When you're on the court, there's a song that plays that's really catchy, and even though it's pretty repetitive, it never got old. I do wish that it didn't drop out when the voice clips played, 30, 40. but at least the voice clips were pretty clear sounding. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid tennis game for the NES. It just takes some time to learn. My rating is this pretty decent. Try it. Rad Racket Deluxe Tennis 2 was published by American Video Entertainment in 1991. Why am I talking about Deluxe Tennis 2? Because I can't find any evidence that a Deluxe Tennis 1 ever existed. One thing I found interesting is that this particular game was not officially licensed by Nintendo. While not always true, this is typically not a good sign. The character selection is good for a laugh at least. John Macaroni? It's a pretty blatant bastardization of John McEnroe, though listing him as from Italy is a little more groan inducing. They put even less effort into Mark Chang, who's pretty clearly Michael Chang. 
Lisa Starr is probably Steffi Graf, and Fred the Meteor Hoot is probably Pistol Pete Sampras. Libra Garcia might be Gabriella Sabatini? I don't know. The only mystery for me is Omar Strato. Who are you, Omar? Speak to me. Tell me your secrets, Omar. Okay, maybe he's Sergei Bruguera or Omar Camperezzi? Whatever. The typical assortment of court surfaces is available, but are accompanied by some rather odd descriptions. The clay court was built by Indians 200 years ago? What the fuck? The manual even has slightly different descriptions. Regardless of who you select, you seem to be a white man wearing white. Your opponent also appears to be the same regardless of what you do. The tennis itself is very bare bones and really not all that fun. Control wise, the A button hits a forehand and the B button hits a backhand. You can smash if you're at the net, time the ball perfectly and hit A. I couldn't really find a way to consistently control the direction of the ball though. I guess it's not terrible, but it, there's very little here to make the game worth your while. For some reason, the score counter is inside the court and adds the number of games to the wrong side. The music is bubbly and peppy, but you'll wish you could turn it off after a few seconds. Sometimes a rat will run on the court. Why? I don't know. I don't really care. Just avoid this game. Let's move on to Quattro Sports. This is another unlicensed game published in 1991 by Comerica. There's four sports to choose from. So being unlicensed, containing four separate sports games, and having this amphetamine crazed maniac on the title screen, I was expecting something truly horrific. In actuality, I found pro tennis to be a pleasant surprise. This game is about as simple as it gets. It's even more bare bones than Rad Racket, Deluxe, Tennis, whatever. No special shots, no special animations, no holding down buttons, no fancy serves. You don't even get a crowd to watch you play. The ball's physics are rather floaty, but your character moves with superhuman speed, so rallies can actually be a lot of fun. Serving is pretty easy. Just hit the ball when it's right about the height of your character's headband. You know, like the pros do in real life. The first court I was on looked to be a pretty busted, fenced-in city park that happens to have a scoreboard for some reason. The next court appeared to be indoors. Ultimately, the game seemed to play the same either way. I did feel a bit of control over the direction of my rally shots, but not much. I didn't really notice any difference between the A and B buttons, either. At least this game is a bit more forgiving than the others in terms of your character's placement and timing of your swings, but it's still pretty easy to get hit by the ball. One thing I found is that there's not much room behind the baseline, which you can use to your advantage. If your shot hits the back wall, you win the point. The game is so simple, there's not much for the manual to tell you. The controls, I mean, they hardly say anything. And their big hint and tip is simply to not get hit by the ball and to hit the ball before it reaches you. Thanks, Codemasters. Other things I liked were like how big the ball's sprite was, and the kind of squat characters reminded me of River City Ransom and Super Dodgeball. The sound is lacking big time. It's pretty much just silence with some triangle channel boops. I did like the characters posing after each game. The gameplay and opponents did seem to get progressively faster and more difficult the more matches I won. I wasn't able to win all the matches, but eventually I had grown a little tired of the simplicity. All in all, a surprisingly decent little title. My rating is not awful. Maybe try it. Hey, thank you so much for watching part one. I'll have part two up in a few days, so be sure to check back. There's lots more games to talk about. Until then, 